the Lord always sends forth watchmen to warn. He always does. He never does anything till he warns. The gospel of accommodation. Now, to accommodate means to adapt. It means to make suitable or acceptable. It also means to adjust, to make something very convenient. A gospel that has yielded to the desires and the weakness of sinful men. It was invented out of hell itself. I wanted you to get a taste of David Wilkerson. This guy was so incredible. He was so powerful in his methodology. He had eyes to see, he had ears to hear, and I'm telling you something, you go back into the late 60s and early 70s, and he was saying things that people told him he was nuts. He was crazy, he was insane. He made outrageous claims. For example, there is coming a time where the church will normalize homosexuality. There's coming a time even when there will be church leaders who are embracing the act itself that will be leading congregations. And he said this in the early 70s, and they said he was insane. David Wilkerson, he saw what was happening to the church, one of the most powerful, influential evangelists that has ever graced this land. He saw something. He saw that the churches had been penetrated by the evil one. He saw what was going on, that they now the new blueprint, the new blueprint of the church is not this, we need to look at corporate America. We need, if we are going to be successful as a community, we need to do what they're doing, what the world's doing to become successful, to bring in profits. This is the blueprint for us today. He saw antinomianism creeping in to the church. He saw it with his eyes where there was this loathing, this, this hatred for the law of God that had come in. These things are real. I'm going to tell you something. The things that David Wilkerson saw, that he saw beginning to happen in the church, these seeds that were being planted, they have come full circle today. One thing I can tell you, Satan has crept in, and what he has done is he's gotten into the innermost sanctum of the faith, and he's been ripping out the vital organs, the vital organs of the faith. And the worst part of this is, the church doesn't know it. They have no idea what is happening to them. They have no idea what they're really following. Another gospel. To them, it's business, pun intended, business as usual. The gospel, hey, it's being preached. We're telling people about Jesus. Everything's wonderful. The only problem is, is it's not the gospel of this book. It's not the gospel that the first century Jewish people, these Jewish believers, the Jewish disciples that went out and transformed the world, turned it upside down. It is not that gospel. But I'm going to tell you, it sounds good and it feels even better. And it comes packaged so beautifully with all this, this array of wonderful, useful terminology, terminology that we love to bathe ourselves in, like love and grace and liberty and freedom. I mean, who doesn't want that, right? Honestly, how could something that seems so right? They're preaching Christ and him crucified. How can something seem so right be so wrong? The answer to that question is when you investigate the gospel, the grace message that is being preached today. And when you start to, I always like to use the analogy, you start to peel back the layers. You start to discover something. It's not as biblical as it's being portrayed. When you understand the goals of our enemy, when you understand his objective, that's when things come into focus. That's when things really come into focus. And I don't know if you noticed or not, but the Brit Hadashah, the New Testament, spends a lot of time talking about the objectives of Asatan. It spends a lot of time with all of these warnings. Yeshua's ministry was filled with the warnings of Hasatan's objectives. What is Satan's primary objective? Number one goal on his list to do, and that is to, in fact, target the grace message. This is target number one. And I'm going to tell you, this is the kill shot. Because if you at all 
in any way alter the true gospel, even a little bit, just a tiny bit, I promise you it will result in 100% fatality. And the enemy knows this. So what does he do? He targets the grace message. But he's crafty. He doesn't do away with it. He redesigns it just ever so slightly. And this new package that he has that is beautiful, that glitters with light, well, it's more appealing to the masses. His version's more acceptable. It's not as offensive. It's very inclusive of everyone. It doesn't matter who you are, you can come. Come as you are. He doesn't need you to change. This is this gospel that is being preached. Just come and enjoy the service. God loves you. Today, we are gonna be covering the inner core of this pseudo gospel, which is not God's mercy, but it's the devil's grace. And the way I wanna do this is I actually wanna take you back into church history. And uh, I wanna show you some things that were said in the first century, things coming straight out of the word. And I wanna show you something that happened in the second century. That was a pivotal moment in time. That has everything to do with what we're talking about here. Jude chapter one, verse three, and we read, beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith, which was once for all delivered to the saints. This is interesting because as I mentioned before in week one, here Jude comes to the, he comes to the front lines, he cries out, he sounds the alarm to his brothers and sisters in the faith, and the cry is, we're under attack. We are under attack, the enemy is attacking us, and the call is to rise up, go and defend the faith. Earnestly, rise up and defend the faith. And in verse four, we read the following. For certain men have crept in unnoticed who long ago were marked out for this condemnation. Ungodly men who turn the grace of God into lewdness. So this attack that Yehuda saw coming that was within the church, it was an attack on the grace message. It was attack on the gospel. The first thing that Satan did, he went for the kill shot. He went for the jugular. He went after the grace message itself. The devil sent his men into the church and they appeared to say all the right things. They appeared to look the part because they have sheep's clothing on. They raise their hands, they bow their head, they pray. They speak the name of Yeshua. They speak the name of Jesus. But inside, they are ravenous wolves. They are ravenous wolves who have come in as spiritual anesthesiologists to literally deaden, to kill the pain of godly sorrow so that they don't turn and repent, which leads to salvation. And through their infectious and attractive rhetoric, they appeal to the masses. More and more believers continue to wallow in their sin while they profess. All the while, they're under grace. And I'm telling you, it's the great delusion. I want to take you to 1 Peter 2, verse 15. And this is what we read. For this is the will of God, that by doing good, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free yet not using liberty as a cloak for vice. Yet not using liberty as a cloak for vice. What an amazing statement. Peter, a Jew, speaking to his Jewish brother and says, we're free, we're under liberty, but we need to be careful because something is happening. Peter saw the exact same thing that Jude saw. Yet not using liberty as a cloak for vice. In other words, he's saying, don't you dare go out. Don't you dare go out and justify your sins, your desires of your heart, your actions, simply by putting the cloak on that says, well, wait a second, I'm under grace. Doesn't matter what it says in the law, the Tanakh, the Torah, this is okay because now we're under grace. And I'm telling you something, this is the grace that the devil is offering the church today. A grace that tells you, you don't need to listen to the law of God. In fact, it goes so so far as to say, 
If you who are under grace, if you do not reject the law entirely, you cannot be under grace. You cannot continue under grace. You must reject it. The greatest deception this world has ever known is this message, is what we see, is what David Wilkerson saw. It's what we see happening in the church today, many of the churches. He's gone out, the enemy has gone out, and he's selling this, and the church is buying it. They're buying all of it, but we should understand why. I mean, you think, well, how is this possible? They're preaching Jesus. This is just too, this is too crazy. It doesn't even make any sense. It makes perfect sense. You don't have to be elaborate in your marketing scheme. It's really simple. Go sell something to someone who needs it, who wants it, who desires it. In other words, what I'm saying to you is Satan comes up and he starts to speak to your flesh and tell you, you can do this. You can do that. You're perfectly okay doing this. Go ahead, embrace it. Eat of the fruit of the tree. You should surely not die. I'm gonna tell you right now, your flesh will consume and lap up every last word that he sells you. In, as he speaks to your heart, as he speaks to your mind, this is what's gonna happen. Hey there, this is Mike at Corner Fringe Ministries. Thanks for watching our video. If you liked the video or it encouraged you, do us a favor, hit the like button, don't forget to hit the share, and if you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button. Now, if you wanna watch the rest of this video, hit the button here. And if you wanna watch the rest of this series, you can check it out here. And don't forget, you can download the Corner Fringe Ministries app today on any of your play stores. Thanks for joining us at Corner Fringe Ministries.